And now a lot of science in space in the immediate future will be done through exploration, no question. Exploration can be of different kinds, of course, uh, robotic, the easy one, the one that we do already, and human. Far more difficult, but far more challenging and potentially more interesting. It, it certainly is being implemented, although in a slower manner, according to the budget flow, inevitably, um, for the robotic part, okay, i.e. the exploration done with automatic spacecraft uh, which both explore the deep sky or land on planets and do surface science, etc. Uh, the more difficult situation refers to human exploration. Here we, we have a, a big if which is related to the future of the NASA program and in particular of the future of the ISS, the International Space Station. Now here I have put forward my own suggestions, not just myself, I mean I have championed some suggestions towards the European Space Agency and in particular that I do believe that the European Space Agency should be capable of putting manned spacecraft in orbit, i.e. be independent for human access into space. I believe that um, we have not yet come up with sufficient justification other than political and the toughest kids on the block, you know, other than that we have not come up with sufficient justification for the immense amount of effort and expense that entails bringing humans back to the moon. Challenge. That I see something that could rally people, people, taxpayers, I mean people who have to cuff up the several trillions that would be necessary. But I mean are we aware um, that the space station was a hundred billions and served nothing else than building itself? Mind you, building itself, I mean building the station was interesting because for each euro, for each dollar that we put in the station, we get about three back in fallout. Technological, workforce, etc. So it's an interesting thing, but this is per se, simply for having the station orbited. There is no additional benefit. Now, if we manage to invest a trillion, i.e. the amount which we have just zapped away, evaporated for those who were playing uh, with uh, uh, house uh, prices, as we recall. We just had to feed in and zap into vacuum one trillion. Well, if we do that, I guarantee we can go to Mars and have a tremendous technological feedback, and at the end, we will have been on Mars, which is not negligible. that uh, we should try and explore, try and, and go there, because it's there, essentially. Of course, if we believe at some point that we will have to abandon this planet to expand into something else, this is far more complicated. We don't need to be under that kind of pressure. I, I simply think the, the technology and the exploration, the daring, is a justification enough for bringing the first expedition um, onto Mars, and it's within our reach. I mean, we know how to do it. We know the basic steps, the things that we would know, we don't know now, we would never know. Namely, the intrinsic danger of, of carrying a crew, a, a, a human crew, across the solar system, back and forth, for a time as long as one year. They sometimes a dose of radiation which could be very dangerous, etc. But that, there's not much we can do about that. It's a, it's a risk that we should take, far smaller, I would say, than the risk of Magellan that started off in two or three hundred, I forgot, and came back in 19, etc. So, you know, it's a risk you have to take. Apollo to incredible risks. In fact, the great problem that NASA faces now is that they want to go back. They discovered two fundamental facts of nature, namely the moon is still at the same distance, roughly, 
that the astronaut mass is always roughly the same and needs are always roughly the same, but the risks that they are allowed to take now are infinitely less than when good old Nazi von Braun was running the show. No, I think we need to do the basic physics first. When I say that we're ready to go to Mars, is because I'm a physicist, I know, we, we know well, we master the physics and the engineering, the technique on nuclear propulsion. And this is what you need to go to Mars. Let's make it very clear. In order to go to the moon, you can use chemistry like we have so far, but to go beyond the moon with human beings, you need nuclear power. No question. Because that's where nature put the maximum concentration of energy, in a way. Okay, uh, this would allow us to, to go with a human crew, uh, certainly to Mars, maybe Venus, which is even closer, possibly a little bit some, some other places close to us in the solar system. Beyond that, even that does not work, and I have no idea of any propulsion system that could propel us to um, the kind of speed that are necessary. Let me summarize by saying that to go to Mars, you need the equivalent of an Airbus that goes at 50 kilometers per second for one year. It's a hell of a lot, but we can at least imagine that. We cannot imagine something like an Airbus, which you always need because a human being is a human being, going at a fraction of the speed of light. That we cannot imagine. Right? I cannot imagine. The Fermi was right, of course, <laughs> as usual. Fermi was always right. Fermi is one of my great heroes, as I'm sure you imagine. Um, fair enough. Namely, there may be not all that many intelligent people out there, but that's not really what propels us. I, I think, first of all, we want to find evidence of life out there which I think is within our reach, and this does not violate the Fermi paradox, which relates to intelligent life, or life at a level of intelligence capable of actually doing interstellar communication, which is quite a lot in terms of intelligence. So, uh, anything else is allowed, and I believe would be extremely interesting. I think we are on the verge of finding it. In fact, I guarantee that within 10 years we will have found another Earth, and an Earth-like planet, you know, we've been discovering there, another Earth-like planet with an atmosphere, possibly with oxygen lines, if not chlorophyll lines in the atmosphere. So we shall have found evidence from far away of life going on in another planet. That would be not bad in itself. We'll take it from there.